Hello everyone, here's the continuation of the theory about Pomni. Make yourself comfortable and let's begin. When Pomni asks about the exit door, I find it quite strange that she doesn't say the orange exit door and specify that she saw this door, as well as a red exit door earlier. I feel that because Pomni didn't explain the colors of the doors, she might have some form of color blindness, where she didn't feel the need to distinguish colors. If her type of color blindness is deuteranopia, then Pomni might think that her jester outfit is blue-green, because according to the map, people with this can only see blue, green, and variations of yellow. Besides not mentioning the color of the exit doors to be specific, she doesn't mention how she saw two exit doors in two different places, and also about how the first door she saw disappeared into thin air in front of her when she tried to reach for it. After Kane talks about how she might just be experiencing digital hallucinations in a cheerful tone, she lightly presses on this topic where he then angrily raises his voice and continues to look a bit irritated, after which she squats down and nods in fear. When Jack suggests eating pizza after Zubel was taken away, she looks confused and silently questions the morality of this decision. Pomni, possibly just like Gangle, might not have been in the digital world long enough to understand that adventures actually pose a no danger to anyone. Despite this, she actually doesn't say anything to question the decision, and later she will soon go off with Ragata and Jax to talk to Kaufmo. When I watched the episode for the first time, I assumed that the noise being made was for dramatic effect, but when you listen during the scene right after this, you can still hear the strange noise from Pomni, and it's then that the fear of being trapped in the digital world causes her to lose her sanity. It seems that distance is Pomni's favorite method of trying to cope with extreme emotions, but it actually doesn't cope with them and only works as a temporary comfort. She completely loses her composure when this calming method fails, but this time she manages to do it, and she doesn't go insane. Pomni reacted about the same time as Regatta did, from the moment they first reacted to the moment Kaufmo lunged at them. About 27 seconds had passed. I'll give credit to Pomni, based on the fact that she stayed with Regatta and tried to help her get up when Kaufmo was behind Regatta, but Pomni had about 26 seconds to urge Regatta to run. Pomni's reaction to freeze in place, fortunately, didn't put her life at risk at the beginning of the episode, as the group of people were friendly, but this time it happened specifically. When Pomni dodges things in the episode as a whole, she jumps to the side. During this particular scene, where she's running away from Kaufmo, she can land her first jump, which, if you look at this scene frame by frame, actually slows her down. When she jumps a second time, it actually almost cost Pomni her life, because she falls flat on her face, but quickly gets up, running on all fours, and then straightens back up. Surprisingly, she somehow doesn't learn lessons from this close call and jumps again one last time before just running. At the end of the chase, instead of turning, for unknown reasons she uses her legs to stop all her momentum, trying to turn 180 degrees all at once, and then continues to jump out of the corridor. Fortunately, she survived thanks to fortunate circumstances, but her evasion methods constantly worked against her, besides just running. Regarding the situation with the doors, Jax's biggest mistake throughout the episode was that he opened the door wide and quickly, instead of slightly opening the door and checking if it was safe to enter. Pomni will repeat the same mistake eight times, four of which ended negatively, when she was chased once, almost fell into a dark abyss once, and was attacked by a trap twice. However, when she finds the exit door, she learns from her mistakes to some extent, and opens the door from the side, but still does not learn from her mistakes, because when she runs through the maze of exit doors, she then continues to fling doors, as she did eight times when looking for Kane. Another reason why I would say she didn't learn her lesson is that she actually doesn't check if it's safe to enter there, but instead throws herself at the door, a mistake that almost led to her falling into a dark abyss. As a note related to the ninth door, she opens, this is the third time she will struggle with her conscience to stay and try to help Regatta, but this specific third time she made a promise to return, but this time she finally ignores her conscience and prioritizes leaving. Despite the fact that she breaks her promise and leaves Regatta to suffer alone, a nice detail is that even in solitude, Pomni still expresses remorse in this situation and understands that what she is doing is a more selfish choice. Despite the fact that everyone already knows about this specific scene, I still wanted to address it. When Pomni loses her sanity, her iris turns into constantly changing black squiggles, instead of the usual red and blue eyes. Pomni also has a nervous laugh during tense situations that make her nervous. I don't know why her eyes remain normal in this scene, 
unlike others. As far as I understand, if her eyes turn into black circles with white centers, it's when she's shocked, when her pupils become small, she's nervous, when her eyes become big, she's surprised, and when they turn into black squiggles, it's when she's trying to focus. Based on this, she's upset, so I feel that this is a manifestation of a new emotion shown in rage. Given what was said, I feel that she wouldn't have abstracted in this state, but rather, this is how she vents her anger, and she doesn't quite carry the same disappointment when running down the last corridor before the void. In the final scene, we don't hear anyone's voices while the closing music is playing, and I assume that this symbolizes that she isn't listening to anyone, which would be logical, because in this situation, no one is actually talking to her, as Jax and Gangle are talking to each other on the opposite side where Pomni is sitting. Going through the details about Pomni roughly in order by the first episode, I would like to make a few additional remarks regarding the details. Looking at all the doors that are visible in the scenes in the general corridor, Pomni was the second jester character in the digital world and probably the first female jester. There was also an unknown excluded chess piece that looks like what Kinger looks like, but surprisingly, Pomni doesn't look like this previous jester at all. As a final belated thought, the combination of the idea that she emits a terrifying noise at a distance, that her eyes, gums, eyelids, and eye sockets are completely black, how sharp teeth appear in her, and how she disrupts the electricity around her when she is in a rage altogether seem like red flags about what she might ultimately turn into if she becomes evil. Another strange idea is that it seems her character is drawn with white makeup, as if it is intended to hide the darkness. At the same time, however, it is unknown whether the characters that people become when entering the digital world reflect their personalities or not, but if they somehow do, the hints seem to reflect the idea of a shadow demon, which can symbolize a completely evil and rotten person trying to stay hidden with all their might. However, if they had nothing to do with Pomni's personality, I might just dismiss them as coincidences. But I'm not sure what to think about these details until we have additional evidence that the character a person inherits reflects his personality or vice versa. Interesting theory. In The Amazing Digital Circus, Pomni is a character who is constantly searching for a way out of the digital world. If we assume that Pomni can abstract, that is, separate her consciousness from the digital world, this could potentially be a way to escape. Perhaps abstraction could allow Pomni to exit the digital world, leaving her digital body behind. This could be similar to how in some science fiction stories, people can upload their consciousness to a digital network, leaving their physical body behind. However, this is just a theory and may be far from how things actually work in the amazing digital circus. After all, the rules of this digital world are determined by its creators. Without additional information or hints from the show's creators, we can only guess and build theories based on what we've seen so far. In any case, this is an interesting idea to ponder. It will be interesting to see how events unfold in future episodes.